Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Yes. Yes. MC. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Santon. Very good. Hare Krishna Lang. Who? Lang. Nine. Lang. Lane or Lane. Yes. From South Africa Lane. Yes. Ah, nice Lane. Hare Krishna I'm Gita Gamidiridasi. Ah. Good, good. <laughs> Yes, of course, and then behind. Hare Krishna Maharaj, my name is Pavisha. Oh. Hare Krishna Mesa. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pavisha. Pavisha. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Maxine. Huh? Maxine. Hare Krishna. The back, the back row. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Kirisha. Hare Krishna Maharaj, my name is Damodar Das. Where? Oh. Who? Damodar Das. Yeah, I can't see. I can see the, I have to see the facial expression. Put him last time. <laughs> and I can capture it. <laughs> and then you put it back again. You must follow the protocol. <laughs> It's just a one second thing. <laughs> so then back. Huh? From there back. <laughs> Come all the way from there. Then go out at the back. Is that Madhava I can see? Very good. And then next to him. Look at that, Maharaj. Look at Maharaj. Speaking to me. And then, uh, look at this thing. Anyone else now? Ah, Vela, she's a Vela. Now, did anyone not introduce themselves? Yeah. Ah, Kamalasan. Thank you. Anyone else not introduce themselves? What you doing, counting of you? <laughs> All right, so this is a very nice verse. And um, it's practical, it's about preaching all over the world. A, a, a fairly famous verse of Srila Prabhupada. So I'll talk about this and then I'll talk about uh, the last few minutes a little bit about Vrindavan next. Sure. So let's do this verse. Everyone. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Kirata. Kirata. people all over the world. So the 
Bhagavatam actually goes back millions of years, but it's just recording in recent history. That's why it could be interesting and sort of practical. So it mentions different races of people, and then in the forecourt, Prabhupada explains, but I'll just say, um, Kirata Huna Andra Pulinda Purakas Abira Samba and Yavana and members of the Kasa race and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord, due to his being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respectful obeisances to him. So this is describing how uh, anyone in any part of the world, because all these places are outside India, and we'll explain each place one by one. Um, anyone who takes shelter of the supreme, uh, of the devotee of the Lord, um, can be purified. Yeah, purified, purified. So the more advanced the devotee is that you take shelter of, then the more chances are you get purified. But not necessarily. You may be a little unsubmissive. A pure devotee of Krishna is very powerful, like a magnet. So the magnet attracts paper clips. But if the paper clips are rusted, then what happens? power is not so much there. So it's not the fault of the magnet, it's the paper clip is not so receptive. So Srila Prabhupada, our spiritual master, and Srila Bhaksadanta, they preached. But not everyone accepted, and some partially accepted, and some fully accepted. There's many gradations. So we know that. Prabhupada came to South Africa in 1975, when a lot of you weren't even born. Correct? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly when you were born. Um, and he preached at University and everywhere, Lodium. And it was a big thing in the newspaper, the star. I even remember the, the religious reporter you know, some things you remember, and this is you know, 45 years ago, so his name was Lambert Pringle. I think he's probably passed away, but he came and interviewed Prabhupada, and it was a very favorable. So people heard about this, but not so many people came. And in the end, Prabhupada initiated, as far as I know, my record, 13 devotees in... Um, South Africa, 13. Uh, one was a, no, no, three were in Indian bodies, uh, and the rest were in this color body. Um, so many more could have been initiated or got involved, they, they didn't. But the pure devotee has that power. And Brahma was particularly empowered to give Krishna consciousness. And um, many people, but not everyone, but many, who came in contact with him became purified. So, so I'll read again. Um, Kirata, this is translation. Kirata, these are all places which we'll now talk about. Kirata, Huna, Andra, Purinda, Purakash, Abhira, Samba, Yavana, and members of the Kasa race, Kasa race, and even others addicted to simple activities, can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord, due to him being the supreme power. I beg to offer my respects to the Lord. Popo, so first Kirata, a province of old Bharat Bash mentioned in the Bhishma Parava of the Mahabharata. Generally, the Kiratas are known as the original, Aboriginal tribes of India. And in modern day, the 
Santa Paganas in Bihar and Chota Nagpur might comprise the old province name Tirat. So Aborigines or tribal people, uh, there are many in India, over a over hundred million. And they're like Norman gypsies. And they just travel around. And their thing is to sleep under the stars. They don't really have a fixed residence. They sleep under the stars. So of course, we have also in the West gypsies. Um, so it's like that, gypsies. Generally a little bit more on the, on the unsophisticated side. Gen generally, got a bit old cat lover, gypsies. <laughs> but also can be devotees, no harm at all. So they're there in India right now, and there's approximately 80 million to 100 million. India, very strange, they have uh, schedules. And you can be a, um, what's the, um, um, the schedule, the, the lower ones, you can remember? The lower ones. Anyhow, they have backward, backward tribes, and they call them backward. And then they have very backward. <laughs> yeah. Um, the name will come in a minute. Um, oh, Dalit. Dalits. So Dalits are very big in India, and they're the lower class. And they're the type, and lower class means, this is all the caste system, we don't agree with it, but uh, street sweepers. And a street sweeper will mean someone that cleans the sewer and the toilets. So it's considered more lower class, even amongst our own Vaishnav devotees. Sometimes they may come from ritualistic Brahmin families. Then we may ask them all. They may be asked clean the toilets. They don't want to. And that's even with an escort. I mean, they don't actually want to. Dalits. And they're so powerful that in India, they have honey. You know, it's around Gopani, honey, where you throw dye. Religious, and it's a big thing in you. When, when I'm living at Govardhan Hill, uh, Holly, then um, I, I don't usually go out. Or if I do go out, I wear my oldest <laughs> Lundi and all that. Or I, or I go out with three or four other devotees to protect me. <laughs> because the kids, they have a water thing. You know, the water squirt gun was made in China. And then they, they squirt me. If you're a European or something, you're a big target. <laughs> so that's Holly, and they have it for like a week over down in Vrindavan. But the day after Holly, there's a tradition where the Dalits take urine and dung, and not cow dung, human, mix it with water, and go around and squirt it. <laughs> And that's a heavy one, but that's, <laughs> that's the type of thing they do, the Dalits. Yeah. So that's Kurta. Then Huna, Huna. The area of East Germany and part of Russia is known as the province of Huna. Accordingly, sometimes a kind of hill tribe is known as Hunas. So in the Vedic culture, and this was written 5,000 years ago, uh, it was known in East Germany and parts of Russia. Some years ago, about 20 years ago, I went to Azerbaijan. Question to my learned audience. Where is Azerbaijan? Maybe it's in Africa. Russia. It's below Russia. It's next to Armenia. It's on the east of Ukraine. It's a Muslim country, but a little soft, soft Muslim. So I went there and the devotees took me out one time. They told me not to wear dhoti and everything. And I went to a um, old monument where a fire god used to live. 
So this fire god was, he was a yogi and he was from India. And he went to Azerbaijan because his austerity was to tolerate coldness. Some, some, they liked him, they liked this cold. So actually he was a yogi and he was tolerant. And although it was a Muslim country, they had little deities for, you know, the diorites of uh, yogis with beards and doing fire yagyas. That was a very interesting monument. You know, Dignamaj wrote about it once when he went there as a bhajan. We have devotees there. And so the tradition is that this yogi from India practiced austerities there. And his austerity was, uh, he wanted to be in a cold place. In the Mahabharata Azerbaijan is referred to a place where there's lots of oil. And you see this, there's lots of oil, those oil machines they have pumping up oil. So the next one, Andhira, no, Andhra, Andhra. So of course we know there's Andhra Pradesh, India. A province in southern India mentioned in the Mahabharata, it still exists under the same name, so Andhra Pradesh. You have to remember India now has a population of how much? More or less, 1.4 billion. Now in the Kali Yuga, India is reducing in size because in 1947, Pakistan left now Pakistan now is 225 million. And then Bangladesh left, became separate country. That's 165 million. Ceylon, Sri Lanka was part of India. Nepal was part of India. So if you add all this together, it's like 2 billion, much bigger than China. So we can see how India was the center. It's where the most people lived. But gradually, as the Kali Yuga progresses, India is reducing in size. So Pakistan was partitioned, and Bangladesh partitioned, and now there is agitation for Kashmir to split, and Punjab, etc. Polinda, another place. It is mentioned in the Mahabharata. The inhabitants of the province of the name Polinda. This country was conquered by Bhimasena and Sade. The Greeks are known as Polindas. So the whole Greek culture. And it's mentioned in the Mahabharata that the non Vedic race of this part of the world would rule over the world. So we know this, the Greek Empire was very powerful at a certain point. This Polinda province was also one of the provinces of India. So at one time it was part of India actually. And the inhabitants were classified amongst the Satriya kings. But later on, due to giving off the Brahminical culture, they were mentioned as Malechus which means just as those who are not followers of the Islamic culture are called kafirs, kafirs, and those who are not followers of the Christian culture are called heathens. So Polindos are the Greeks, so Greece was part of India, and obviously all the countries between Greece and India. So you can see India actually was the center of the world previously, not now, it's the center of COVID. <laughs> but previously, it was the center of all uh, So there was a king, and uh, his name was uh, King y Yavati, and he had two sons who disagreed with him. And one son left India and started the Greek culture, and the other son went to Rome and started the Roman culture. So you'll see in Greek culture, uh, they call it mythology, there are Greek gods. So who's the main Greek god? I think it was Zeus. 
So this Zeus would be Indra. And then they have a god of evil and the god of magic. And the Roman culture, um, I don't know who it was, Jupiter. And they also had all their demigods. And the Scandinavian culture, which we know a little bit about because they're making films about Thor. Not that I watched them. <laughs> I used to read comics on Thor 50 years ago. <laughs> so you've got Thor and Odin. He's the, he's, Odin would be Jupiter, would be uh, Indra, Indra, the king of the demigods. And uh, Loki, he does mischief, mm. magic, and so many others. So you'll see in the Scandinavian culture, Roman culture, and Greek culture, there is this idea of many demigods. But they just gave them different names. So Indra became called Zeus. Indra became called Odin. According to the language, we see this now even. We say the word God. God in French. Does anyone know what is the word? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. In French. Yeah. And then in um, Italian has another name. I think the word God is a German name. Yes. Sure. I think it's a German name. Yeah. Um, so in different languages, but you're referring to the same person. The ultimate truth, the source of everything. And now generally in the West, the word God is stuck. I mean, you saw it. So now the next one. Uh, mm, Abira, Abira, A B H I R A, Abira. This name applies to the Mahabharat, or this name appeared in the Mahabharat, both in the Sabha and Bhishma Parva. It is mentioned that this province was situated on the river Saraswati in Sindh. The modern Sindh province formerly extended to the other side of the Arabian Sea, and all the inhabitants of that province were known as Abiras. They were under the domination of Mara Yudhisthira, and according to the statement of Mahatma Markandaya, the Malachas of this part of the world would rule over Bharat. Later on, this proved to be true as in the case of the Polundas. On behalf of the Polundas, Alexander the Great conquered India. You see how this is now supported by so-called Western chronological history. Alexander the Great was a person. Actually, he had a very good memory. And he could remember by someone's face, because they weren't wearing masks. <laughs> he could remember their names. He had an extremely good memory. It's called mnemonics. What is mnemonics? is the art of memory. <clears throat> you train the mind to memorize things by comparing it. Numbers, faces. It's very powerful mnemonics. I even read a book on mnemonics and I thought it would help me to, to learn verses in the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Alexander the Great, he conquered India, which is true. Then Muhammad Gauri conquered India. That would have been like in the 1200s. These Abiras were also formerly Satriyas within the Brahminical culture that gave up their connection. The Satriyas were afraid of Parasharam and had hidden themselves in the hilly region Later on, they were known as Abhiras. Mm. So Parasharam, of course, an incarnation of Krishna, killed Satriya's uh, leaders who were rascals. And there were many. So they fled. And this is actually how Western civilization started. They fled to 
Scandinavia, Norway, you have the Vikings. It's, they got a little bit of a Satria spirit, but really not much. Because <laughs> Satria is very honorable. And the English culture, uh, French and Germany, Russia, they all left India. And then uh, these different cultures started where they didn't strictly follow the Vedic culture, like they weren't strictly vegetarians. Some went to Egypt, and they had partial knowledge. So in Egypt, the, their knowledge was that uh, there's an afterlife. So that is Vedic, we know that. There is an afterlife. We are the soul. The soul is eternal. You will take birth again. So in Egyptian culture, they believed in the afterlife, but they thought it was the same body which would come together again. So they mummified it, and they put it in various pyramids, the rich Tutankhamun, and with it, <clears throat> so many servants, they also arbitrarily killed, <laughs> thinking that these servants would come back to life, you know, in the next life. So the idea of a next life our next existence is correct. It's partial knowledge. It's twisted. It's just, it's just twisted. Even our favorite uh, dictator of the 20th century, uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, in the early 1930s, read the Bhagavad Gita. He was an ardent reader. He read the Bhagavad Gita, became a vegetarian, and he wrote this in his biography called Men Kalf. And he took sections of the Vedas and introduced it into his somewhat twisted philosophy that the blue-eyed, light-colored, and golden-haired people will take over for 1,000 years. Um, and then, of course, he took the, the most famous is he took he took the swastika, swastika, uh, the swastika, <laughs> but he turned it around. It's not the same as we see on the oven. He twisted it around, and that was their symbol. I remember I was preaching to my mother, bless her soul, she passed away, but. So I gave her the book and she, she saw the symbol and she was horrified <laughs> because she lived through World War II. That bombing in London, she lived through all that. She lived through, she was a young girl when, she, when all that happened. Uh, so I had to explain to her and then she understood. So the example I'm getting is that Hitler, he took some information, but left other information. So he had partial knowledge and twisted it around. So it's dangerous, very dangerous. Partial. You're not getting the full picture. So now we have the Sambas and the Kakasas. The inhabitants of the Kanaka province of Old Bharat mentioned in the Mahabharat. Hmm. All right, now we have the Yavanas. So we use that word when we preach Malachas and Yavanas. Yavanas, when we use it in Krishna consciousness, it means meat eater. And Malachas means one who doesn't follow the Vedic culture, which is basically the same thing. Not following the Vedic culture, Malachas will eat the cows and disrespect Brahmins. So Yavanas was the name, oh, Yavana, was the name of one of the sons of Marajayati. Remember I said Marajati? And he had two sons. So he was the son of Marajati, who was given the part of the world known as Turkey to rule. Therefore the Turks are Yavanas, due to their descendants of Maharaj Yavana. The Yavanas were themselves Satriyas, and later on, by giving up Brahminical culture, they became Malachi Yavanas. Description of the Yavanas is in the Mahabharata. Another prince, 
a Mirza called Turvasu, was also known as Yavana, and his country was conquered by Sahadev. The Western Yavanas joined with Duryodhana in the Battle of Kurukshetra under the pressure of Karna. It is also foretold that these Yavanas would also conquer India. The Turks conquered India at the time of uh, Lord Chaitanya conquered India, the Turks. Now we're preaching in Turkey. We have temple in Hungary, and it's run by my senior godbrother, Solana Shibra Maharaj, who's actually from Hungary, very senior devotee in our mission. And he went back to Hungary, uh, where he lived as a young child, and now he's preaching next door, which is Turkey. Turkey's 85 million people. <laughs> so now we have devotees in Turkey. And below, um, below Hungary, who knows what, who, what country is below Hungary? It's the famous country of Count Dracula, Romania. It's a strange country, <laughs> Romania. So they're also preaching in Romania. This is where the stories of Count Dracula come from, yeah. Romania. And below Romania is Bulgaria, and I went there two or three times. Actually, I have some disciples, even in Bulgaria, believe it or not. Um, all right, so now Kasa, K-H-A-S-A. The inhabitants of Kasa days are mentioned in the Mahabharat. Those who have stunted growth of hair on the upper lip are called Kassas. They are known as the Mongolians and Chinese. So we see this China, Mongolia, stunted hair on the lip. So we're preaching also in Mongolia and China. We don't hear much about our preaching in China. Why is that? It has to be kept secret. The Chinese are afraid of any threat any any type of organized threat, organized religion, organized anything. Uh, they ban things very, very quickly. So we never give figures of how many initiated devotees there are in China or how many temples we have. But I think it's quite widespread, China. All right, now the above mentioned historical names are different nations of the world, even those who are constantly engaged in sinful acts are all encouraged to the standard of perfect human being. If they take shelter of the devotees of the Lord, etc. Jesus Christ and Muhammad, now Prabhupada is writing, Jesus Christ and Muhammad are two powerful devotees of the Lord have done tremendous service on behalf of the Lord on the surface of the globe. So Prabhupada is acknowledging, it's not that we are sectarian, he's acknowledging Prophet Muhammad and acknowledging Jesus Christ. But the people they were preaching to weren't very cultured. Would you agree? They weren't cultured. Uh, for instance, in the Quran, I've understood there is two of Muhammad's instructions, at least he gave many, but two was, do not have sex with your mother. Uh, and do not bury your daughters alive. <laughs> daughters. Daughters are apparently given so, so much high respect in those parts of the world. So, um, do not have sex with your mother. Now, if I spent the last 35 minutes explaining how individually, collectively, you should not have sex with your mother, it's not proper, it's not polite, it's not appropriate, would you not be a little offended? Mm. Yeah. I think so. I think we've already started on that understanding. When we come into Iskand Mid Midrat, we already know that. <laughs> <laughs> but the clientele at that time, they didn't. 
So Muhammad had to stress that. So this indicates the intelligence of, of the people at that time. But still, Prabhupada is saying, Muhammad did tremendous service on behalf of the Lord. And then Jesus Christ, we also have the statements and many of his followers were fishermen, carpenters, and shepherds. Now you do not need an MBA or a postgraduate degree in IT technology to be a shepherd. What is a shepherd? Someone who counts the sheep. <laughs> You've just got to be able to count. You know, a fisherman. Mm. So these are the people he was attempting to preach to. And then in the end, even his intimate associates, which we would refer to as his disciples, uh, one of them betrayed him. Who was the one who betrayed him? Judas. Judas Iscariot. And then who was the doubting one? Famous. Doubting Thomas. Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Doubted. And these were his direct disciples. This is like you, know, you take the 12 apostles, the 12 senior GPC members <laughs> <laughs> following Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> you know, they doubt or even they betrayed. And of course he was crucified. The people he was preaching to actually crucified. Mm -hmm. Terrible. And now, which, which compounds it, which makes it even more terrible, is that you go to these churches, not the modern evangelistic ones, but the Catholic churches especially, and what do you see? A big effigy. And it's, a, it's a deity. Mm -hmm. Out of brass, silver, and it's Jesus suffering and he's on the cross. That's like you go to our temple here in Midran and we see a picture of Prabhupada on his deathbed, thin, dying. But that The Christian conception is even worse because the, he's being tortured. Jesus is being tortured. Do we want to think of Prabhupada and Bhaktivedanta and Bhaktivedanta Thakka on their deathbed? Do we want to think of Pankajanri Prabhu in, in the last 10 seconds of his life. It's not very pleasant. It's not very nice. Uh, our pictures of Prabhupada when he's younger, uh, at a certain age. So this old uh, idea of the cross, it, it's not quite correct, really, to tell you the truth. It's not, it's not how you think of an advanced devotee of the Lord. It's, it's not an appropriate way to think of Jesus. So they killed him. They killed him. This, I never saw the film. I know one of my godbrothers who saw this film, uh, Mission of Jesus Christ. Did anyone hear it yet? The passion, the passion of the Christ. Huh? Passion. The passion of the yeah, Christ. Yeah, Passion of Jesus Christ. I was getting wrong. Did you see it? Yes. Did you see it? Did you like it? Cry. You made him cry. Yeah. It was filmed by Mel Gibson, mm. who is a, apparently a Catholic. And it's just the last two hours of Jesus' life. Not something you want to see, <laughs> carrying the cross. One of my godbrothers saw it, he's a GBC member, and he said it was the worst mistake he ever made in the world. <laughs> he said it was the worst mistake. He said the two films, the worst, he saw the film of Prabhupada leaving and the, and, and the Passion of Jesus Christ film. He said it was the worst. And the, then, he said, then I asked, did you ever see any other films? And he said, yes, I saw the film about Gandhi. You know, 20 years ago they had that film, 30 years, 40 years ago, before most of you were born. It was a film about Gandhi. Uh, who was it? Who played Gandhi Betty something or other? Kingsley. King Kingsley, yeah. Not that I know about these things. <laughs> so, Krishna consciousness is very powerful. Let me read it again. 
Kirtas, Gunas, Andras, Pulinda, Rokas, Abhira, Samba, Yavanas, members of the Kasa race, Chinese Mughalians, and even others addicted to sinful acts can be purified by taking shelter of the devotees of the Lord because he is the supreme power. So we want to take shelter of Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada representatives, and anyone who helps us take shelter of Prabhupada, he's bona fide spiritual master in the Guru Parampara, completely bona fide. So anyone who assists and help us develop our attachment to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada's mission, uh, we should accept their siksha. Siksha means instruction. Accept their advice. So the important thing to take away from this, I think, is that powerful devotees of the Lord can purify. And secondly, that Prabhupada is saying, Lord Jesus and Muhammad, two powerful devotees of the Lord, have done tremendous benefit, sorry, tremendous service on behalf of the Lord. So this we can say also that to others who may be Christians in our place of work or Muslims, they may be a little fanatical or whatever. Uh, religion without philosophy is sentimental or sentimentalism and sometimes leads to fanaticism. So we see this fanatical Muslims in the name of Allah, they perform jihad. Uh, and then the other way around, that, um, philosophy without religion is a mental speculation. So then on the other side, we have people like Charles Darwin, Richard Dawkins, who openly deny the existence of God. Richard Dawkins is a, um, a very outspoken professor at Oxford and denies the existence of God, he really. So much so that he advertised on the side of a bus in Oxford, God is dead. <laughs> <laughs> he had it painted on the side of a bus. He used to drive people around, God is dead. Of course that's Nietzsche, God is dead. <laughs> Anyhow, we have to preach. And preaching means converting the Jagai and Madans. So there will be the Jagai and Madans and we're trying to preach. So we, we're fortunate, we've taken shelter of Prabhupada, which means Boksadanta, Guru Parampara, and Shri Boksadanta's disciples. And gradually we're going forward in our advance. So in conclusion, the purpose of this verse was just to establish how Vedic culture actually was all over the world. And due to the advent of Kali Yuga, the Satriyas left India and went to places like Greece and Mongolia and Azerbaijan and Russia and Norway and England and um, established their own cultures, which had little remnants, but they became meat eaters, uh, slaughtering cow and giving up Brahminical culture. And the last place to be inhabited was where? The U.S. Isn't it? In the 1500s, what was America? North America. I don't think it was much. It was, it was Red Indians. What are they? Apaches? What other ones are they? Sioux? Cherokees. One of my god brothers is, is, is he's a Red Indian. Came into South Africa and preached. His name is Rokma. He, he helped us. And he cooked for Prabhupada in 1975. And Prabhupada liked his cooking so much because he used to cook samosas, well, kachoris for Prabhupada at night. That uh, Prabhupada told him, go to Vrindavan, Krishna Balam Temple, cook for the deities. His name was Rokma Prabhu, so he went. But he, he was a Red Indian. And I could see that because later on, he didn't really fit into ISKCON, but he followed all the principles. And he had great faith in Prabhupada. 
and he lived in the back of a van. He came to Radha Radhanath and, and he lived in the back of a van. It's like living in a tent. <laughs> it's like a Red Indian, you know. <laughs> he lived in the back of a transit van. He liked that. That's what he, he didn't want to rule. So I'm not sure what he's doing now. I think he might be in Thailand, but he's he's practicing, but in his own way. So thank you very much. We're very fortunate. Just consider your good fortune to be connected to Prabhupada. And we try in our own way to preach. So our preaching field is not Mongolia or Siberia or Latvia. Where is it? South Africa. And for most of you, it's Santon, Polynesia, or Pretoria, or Midland. So we have to do the best we can under the presence of, right now, this coronavirus, so we understand that. But that will gradually fade away, but something else may come. Something, some other disease may come. Yes. We have to do the best we can and cooperate with each other. It's always a question of cooperation. Um, we try to cooperate together. That's not easy. It's very difficult. One definition of <clears throat> cooperation is to comply with someone else's request. But you I might immediately think, well, why don't they comply with my request? <laughs> so to cooperate is it's not easy at all. I mean, I want to be honest. Most of you are married. Is it completely sweet husband and wife relationship? Or it doesn't have its little ups and downs. Ups and downs. Now, that's the most intimate relationship you can get, husband and wife. Now just take the person by himself. Just you by yourself. How do you feel on a Monday morning? You have to go to work ordinarily. It's cold. You get depressed. It's human psychology. You get depressed. You're fighting with yourself. You know? It's like you'd, you're the type of person perhaps you'd have a fight. If there was no one else in the room, you still have an argument. You're arguing for yourself. I'm useless. I can't do this. I failed here. This relationship. I'm useless. But then Thursday comes, you feel a little bit better. And Thursday morning, better. And Thursday afternoon, it's Friday night fever. <laughs> right? And Saturday, oh yes. Saturday night fever. You can see it on the roads. Saturday night fever. People shooting here, yeah, shooting here, <laughs> driving, driving, driving. <laughs> and then Sunday again, depression. <clears throat> hmm? I remember as a kid, Sunday morning wasn't too bad. Sunday afternoon, I went into depression. Because <laughs> school on Monday. <laughs> So we get depressed ourselves. Seven percent of the population in, uh, in America uh, get depressed during the course of a year. Now this is an interesting statistic. Five percent have seasonal depression. What is seasonal depression? The seasons change. And it's usually, well it's always winter. When winter comes, when winter comes, they get depressed. According to the article I read, it's not spring or summer, it's winter. Hmm. One of my disciples in Ukraine, he told me that during the winter in Ukraine, three, four months, five months, it's overcast. It's minus 15, it's minus 20, and he goes into depression because he can't see the sun. You know, when you see the sun, it uplifts you. Hmm. And then I read an article uh, two or three years ago in the month of December in uh, Moscow. There was six minutes of sun. A whole month. You could only see the sun for six minutes. And people live in this. We, we, we're not used to this. We're, you know, it's, it's the opposite for us. We're always seeing this. And then you get depressed. Mm -hmm. And you get moody, mood swings. And then you shout at the husband. You give him a slap. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you shout at the kids. And you kick the cat. <laughs>
So anyhow, we're fortunate. We have to just tolerate these things, continue with our Krishna consciousness, try to preach as best we can. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Also, I can just add very briefly, Pankajanri Prabhu, my <coughs> esteemed senior godbrother, he joined when I did, actually in London, but I, I don't remember meeting him, but he told me he worked on the Roth Theatre Cards, 1973, so I was out giving books. Um, <clears throat> so then, and also I found I was 10 years older than me, he's, he's like, um, how old is he? 77. 77. 77. So, yeah, 77, yes. Yeah, Looks 77. But I have no doubt in my mind that he's returned to the spiritual world. He would have, technically, he would have taken birth, it's called Boston City, in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Of course, you can say this is gone is Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Living in Iskon Mayapur for 50 years is, is Mahaprabhu's pastimes. So, in one sense, you can. But Sakshat Darshan means direct Sakshat. So, this is what he's getting now direct. Chaitanya Nichinana Dvaita Dada Sri Bhas Haridas Thakur Marari Panda The other day Vrindavan Das Thakur It was his appearance or disappearance? Vrindavan Das Thakur Last disciple of Lord Nichinana So Pankajanri Prabhu in a spiritual body will be associating with Lord Chaitanya's associates somewhere in this universe not here because we missed it by 500 years you can go back in the time machine, 500 years ago, you'll see Lord Chaitanya dancing, Sri Basana, and the Lord Nityananda, and the 130 associates that are described in Ali Leela, chapter 10, that you all know off by heart. <laughs> Joking. So uh, I'm convinced. So actually, there's no need to lament. The fact is, when you get old, the body really gives you some problems. I'm diabetic. I'm hypertensive. I have headaches. So many of my god brothers. Why hang around in this mundane, mortal body? Why not join in Lord Chaitanya's pastime with the spiritual body? Seems like a, a better option. Would you agree? Yes. So that's where he's gone. But we're praying, no, no, please stay here in this diseased body. It, 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 it. So, of course, the separation. We like his association of his talks. I've been playing his talks. Very nice. Very nice talks. So we pray to also Pankajanri Prabhu and others. I got a message today that one of my, another disciple died. Uh, Uddhava, his mother. But I don't know whether it's from COVID or just natural, but she was initiated. And then I got a letter from uh, uh, Ratan Krishna Prabhu. He told me 28 people in, in Iskon Mayapur have COVID. But then it's, you know, there's mild, there's, there's more worse, there's hospital COVID, there's many degrees of COVID. So he didn't explain in detail. He said there's a little bit of a sense of fear since Pankajanri left. And of course we know it's spreading throughout India. So we should take necessary precautions, definitely. And just put all our faith in Krishna. I can give you two quotes. One from an English king called Oliver Cromwell, who said, Put your faith in God, but keep your gunpowder dry. <laughs> he was a revolutionist. <laughs> Cromwell. And then I can give you a quote from the uh, Quran. It's actually not the Quran, it's Sufi. Sufism. Sufis are the mystical side of Islam. A couple of Sufis came to my talk in Cape Town, the Sufis there, the, the more liberal. Sufi mysticism is based on the Quran. So they say, put all your faith in the Quran and keep your camels tied up. 
<laughs> so I hope you tied all your camels. <laughs> there are camel themes. It's called camel jackers. <laughs> Car jackers, camel back, camel jackers. But still your your BMW camel. <laughs> Mercedes. So we'll end now. Anyone would like to add anything or any comment or clarification? Please feel free to speak if you have anything to say. Anything? Huh? Maharaj, uh, the song by Narutan Das Thakur about uh, Separation from Lord Chaitanya and his associates. Um, how do we understand that? Um, Kauranda yeah. Bolite Abe, Polaka Sarira, Hori Hori Bolite, Nayana Babe, Nira. Ale Kate Nitai Chadira, Karuna Hoybe, Samsara Vasana Moji. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot the question. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nilo Premadana. Yes. So he's a few generations after Lord Chaitanya, but he's been... Narathon, no. When did Lord Chaitanya leave this material world? Answer. Scholars? Come on, come on, you must know. 15, and Narutom appeared in 1534. So not a few generations. So the next, basically the next generation. In, but he's understood to be the next generation. So he's never met Lord Chaitanya or his Ah, uh, but he has Puti, dream. Lord Chaitanya appeared in his dream and revealed everything. But Narutom is not just anyone from yes. Putoria. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's not just anyone on the way. <laughs> Narutom is Vilas Manjari and yeah? Radha and Krishna Pastor. So the three of them, Narutom, uh, Srinivasacharya, and Shyamananda Pandit. So what is it? The question is, uh, uh, he felt great separation not direct physical association, but we find that when devotees, uh, or rather like Prabhupada disciples, like Pankajangri Prabhu, and so many that have left already Bhakti, in his audience, Bhakti Charasana, mm -hmm. we also feel separation without direct association. Is, is there some parallel? Is that genuine? Yeah, it could, it could be a little sentimental. It could be mixed sentimental and the real thing, but it is not sentimental attachment better than no attachment. We meet Christians and Hindus and they have a sentimental attachment. It's better than no attachment. But better than sentimental is uh, attachment based on sambandana jnana. And what is the word sambandana jnana means? Very simple. You should all know this word. Jnana means knowledge. Sambandana means relationship. Relationship. Knowledge of our relationship with Guru, Maya, this body, the mind, by Kuntha. Uh, so many types of Sambandana Gyana. One has to have this knowledge. And that's what we have in our books. We actually have some philosophy. Whereas, unfortunately, in the Bible and the Quran, it, it, it's missing. So thank you very much. We'll have something next Saturday, but according to protocol, we hope that things don't get worse. And uh, we should end with a little kirtan and then make some announcement. So five minute kirtan, and then at least my disciples can just come and speak to me a little more.